Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video I want to talk about how I've combined smart bulbs, like this LifeX Wi-Fi bulb, with Shelly relays, like this Shelly one, to solve one of the most infuriating problems with smart bulbs. What happens when somebody turns them off? So to help kind of talk through the problem, I thought it'd be useful to give a demonstration of how you can control a smart bulb through Home Assistant. So on my desk here in front of me, I've got a little test rig set up. So this is just a standard kind of electrical pendant arrangement. Got your pendant, you got your bulb. This is the same LifeX bulb um, I showed at the start, and then a switch. So the switch is currently in the on position. So the bulb is connected to the Wi-Fi. And if we hop over to Home Assistant, you can see I've got my master bedroom light set up here. So if we bring the bulb back into view, like so, and obviously I can switch the light on. All right, nothing too fantastic about that, and I can turn it off. I'm also able to adjust the brightness of the bulb. So I can drop that down to like 20%, and I can also change the color temperature of the bulb. So that's from warm to cold. Now that's particular to this it's particular to this light bulb. This is a LifeX cold to warm. So I'm able to change its, its color. That's not available on all smart bulbs, but it's available on this one. And then I've also got the ability to, to dim it. Uh, if I switch that off. Right, so that's all fine and dandy. It's pretty standard. I can do all this from my phone as well. I just happen to be using the LifeX integration with Home Assistant, but all of this is available through, my, through the app on my, on my phone. The problem for me arises when this happens. Somebody switches off the light at the wall. This means that I've lost all control uh, from within Home Assistant and none of my automations to turn the lights on automatically will now do anything because the light is essentially dead. So I've gone from a very expensive, smart Wi-Fi bulb to a very dumb one. Now people cope with this in different ways, you know, from using sellotape to block the switch to buying a proper cover that they can attach over the switch. Neither of those options appeal to me, mainly for aesthetic reasons. Uh, we've got some very, very nice MK uh, Dimensions light switches. Um, they're black, they've got these really nice covers, and we've got them all over the house. And if I had to put, start putting tape over them or uh, buying different covers, it would kind of defeat the point. There's also something really nice just about a light switch. It's always there. It's very, very quick, convenient, and everybody understands how to use it. Uh, sometimes with these smart bulbs, you need to have an app or you need to use voice to turn them on and turn them off. And that means that if somebody comes over to stay, they can't do anything. They can't turn the lights on themselves without knowing what command to issue or, you know, being given access uh, through the app. So I really, really like the simplicity of just a light switch. Um, everybody knows how to use them and they're just there as you come into a room and exit the room. So I found a way using uh, Shelly relays to combine the best of the light switch and the smart light, the smart bulb. And I'll take you through that solution now. So I've gone ahead and installed in this little backing box a Shelly one. So that's wired up as it normally would be if it was in its usual place inside the ceiling rows. But just for ease, I've popped it into the box here and it's wired in using its standard configuration. I won't go into the wiring in this video. There's plenty of tutorials, etc., online. Um, and I've posted a link to this. I've done a, a blog post about this and I'll post a link to that in the description. And that includes the wiring that you would use for a Shelly inside a standard pendant. If we hop over to Home Assistant, uh, you'll see the bulb is enabled and I can turn that off and on. As before, I can do everything that I could uh, prior. 
But what I can also do now is bring up the Shelly control itself. So I've got the, um, I'll turn the light back on. And if I jump over to the Shelly, you can see that the Shelly's relay is turned on. So this is exactly the same as the light switch. If I flick this, it kills power completely to the bulb. So exactly the same as the light switch itself would work. And if I turn the relay back on, the bulb will come on as before. So it's no different to me clicking the light switch. However, what we can do inside the Shelly is jump into the settings and switch down to this button type. So the button type indicates uh, what happens with the integration to the switch. So to kind of give you a, a bit more idea of what that means. So with the Shelly relay, uh, I've got one here. There's a couple of different inputs on it, uh, but one of them is the SW or SL or switch wire SW, it's SW, so that's, that's the switch wire. So what that means is that in a normal setup, the, the switch is actually wired directly into the Shelly. So it can detect when the light switch is turned on or off. It then uses that decision or that piece of information to decide what to do. So if we look here at the button types, there's a couple of different ones available to us. So the typical one is this toggle switch. So that's kind of its default. So that means that when the switch wire is toggled, it'll actually toggle the relay. So if I kind of flick that, you know, that's not actually connected directly to the light bulb. It's telling the Shelly to, or it's sending a signal to the Shelly with the, via the switch wire, and then the Shelly is turning the relay, or it's opening it or closing it, depending. So when I flick that, that's basically telling the Shelly toggle. Now, one of the more interesting options that Shelly added to their software is this detached switch. So the detached switch essentially divorces the relay from the physical switch. So let me show you what that means. So if I'm gonna switch this mode on and I'll bring the, the, the bulb back into view. So before, when I flicked the switch, the bulb would turn off. Now, when I flick the switch, nothing happens. So the Shelly is still detecting the changes to the position of the switch, but because I've set it to this divorced mode or this detached mode, it doesn't do anything with that. So how do we take advantage of that? I'm gonna hop into Home Assistant now, and I've got the Shelly already added in, and you can see that this is the standard we've been looking at this before. If I bring the camera, uh, if I bring the bulb back in, you can see if I click the switch, it toggles the relay and the bulb goes out. I'll click that again and it'll bring it back in. Now, what's of interest is under the sensor section. So we've got an entity not shown and I'll expand that and you can see we've got an input. So this is disabled by default. So I'll flick it over here and I'll click enabled. And this can take, as it, as it says there, it can take about 30 seconds to appear. So we'll just give that a little bit of time. So we're in business now, the input has appeared, and this input is actually the state of the switch. So if I flick the switch now, you can see that the input switch is too detected. So it's essentially saying, it's detected the switched live power. If I flick it back, it's now clear. So what the Shelly has actually done is given us a way to read the state of the switch without doing anything to the bulb. So to take advantage of this input, we're gonna to need to create an automation. Now what the automation will do is it will listen for changes to this input and then it will simply toggle the state of the light, uh, as I was doing earlier in the video. So we'll start by grabbing the ID, 
and then we're going to create an automation. Now, uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to create a Home Assistant automation. I traditionally use a Node-RED for all for myself, but it, the process is, uh, the action is essentially the same. So we've grabbed the state of the input. So we'll jump over here now and we'll go to automations. We'll click add. We'll create an empty one. So the trigger is pretty simple. We're just going to be triggered on the state change. So we'll paste in the name of the input that I just copied. So that's that. And then what we want to do is we want to toggle the light. So we'll do call service. We'll do light.toggle. Then we will add an entity. And it is light.pendant.masterbedrooms. This is going to be, we'll click save. And we'll just call this, oh, we'll call it master bedroom. Doesn't matter, right? So that's our automation set up. I'll bring the switch back in. So now when I flick the switch, you can see it's triggered the automation and it's turned the light off. Clicking it turns it back on. Now the primary difference here is that when I do this, the smart bulb has still got power because the Shelly relay is still engaged. Now if I jump back to the shell to the relay itself, you can see the relay is still turned on. So the bulb is still receiving power. So you can turn it on, turn it off automatically. You can run any sort of automation you want. If we actually navigate to the bulb, um, it should be in here. Actually, if we just do, well, I'll get rid of the, I will just do master. Oh, that's devices, sorry. It's gonna be an entity, isn't it? So we'll do master bedroom, this gun here. So this is our pendant. So you can see it's currently off. I'll bring it back in and I can do that. So even though I've flicked the switch to turn it off, um, I'm still able to, to manage it directly because it's still basically powered up. It's just not emitting any light. Um, I'm also then able to turn it off with the switch. So even if I have turned it on using Home Assistant, I'm able to manage it uh, directly through the switch as well, which is, which is great. Now it's not a perfect solution, not, not by a long shot. Obviously I can now turn the light, you can turn my lights on and off, which is great. And you know, all my automations for um, nighttime, etc., will, will happen, uh, even if, the, you know, regardless of what's happened, the light switch on the wall. But things that you can't do, so obviously you can't control the brightness of the bulb um, from the switch, and you can't do anything with, with color changing or anything like that. So it's not, you know, it's not a complete solution. But I think what Shelley have done by allowing you to sort of divorce the relay from the switch is really clever. And it enables this kind of, it's kind of quite clever control where, you know, I don't suffer that problem if somebody switches the light off by accident. It's not also limited to, to Wi-Fi controlled bulbs. You can kind of use the Shelly relays and this fancy with basically anything. So in my kitchen, I've got about 15 uh, Zigbee down lights and they're all controlled using uh, this mechanism. I'm going to do a video on that at some stage, just running it through the setup and then some of the little, uh, yeah, some of the little tricks with scene controls and stuff that I've, that I've been working on. I'm using this particular approach with most of the lighting in my house. Um, I don't have smart lights absolutely everywhere, but I'm not far off it. I think the bathroom is the only room where I don't have one and maybe the hallway and landing. Um, using Shelly dimmers there uh, to control those lights directly but basically everywhere else um, I'm using this approach. I should also point out that there's also an energy implication uh, associated with keeping the bulbs running all the time. They're obviously powered on, they're connected either through your Zigbee or through your Wi-Fi and the Shelly relays also consume a couple of watts when they are running. So you kind of get that flexibility, but it does come with a power cord. I mean, it's, it is minimal, but it's just something to be aware of that leaving all your lights on, they're essentially on even if they're not producing light. And that's it for this video. 
Uh, if you'd like to know any more or ask me any questions, please use the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. And that's it. I'm Tom, and thanks for watching.